All right. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian from Khux Nation, and in today's video, we're going over one of the newest units, and this one is honestly going to be one of the coolest ones in my opinion, just because you know of the whole lore aspect. Uh, but it's Gala Prince, which obviously is the main character, but it almost comes across like a like a futuristic version of him, like like a side of him we have not seen yet. Uh, in terms of lore and story, at least. So, I don't know. At least to me, I think this is pretty dope for an anniversary type Gala unit. Uh, but, regardless, let's go ahead and go over the unit and I'll give my thoughts about it. Uh, he has a 5-star light sword unit. Okay. In terms of his uh, activated abilities, he has Rising Circlet. Deals light damage to surrounding enemies, so good AoE move. And creates a buff zone that lasts for 10 seconds and increases the strength of adventurers inside it by 20 percent now in case you're not aware uh nintendo did release a video yesterday uh show uh giving like a sneak peek at all of the new content that'll be arriving uh for their first anniversary tomorrow or i guess by the time i post this video today <laughs> uh <clears throat> And this was one of them. Now, I don't have the video or I, uh, because of the fact that I'm recording this in advance. So before the showcase actually happens, I can't really show you uh, the little kind of animation video that they usually show you. But in the video, they show a uh, the rising circlet move itself. And the buff zone is absolutely massive. Like it's huge. It takes up a giant portion of the field. Um, so it it's very it's like without a doubt it's very easy to easily stand within that buff zone and gain that 20 percent which is which is honestly a pretty huge amount um there aren't too many units that will go up that high in terms of a buff now in terms of the second activated ability which is exalted glory deals light damage to this this move is absolutely ridiculous because of how much it does it's an it's honestly insane um deals light damage to enemies directly ahead Inflicts paralysis, so already has a status ailment. Increases the entire team's strength and defense by 15% for 15 seconds. Okay, so it does a status ailment and it buffs both attack and defense at the same time. So it easily triggers any uh, double strength or double and easily triggers any uh, double buff abilities you might have. Uh, as making you tankier and stronger on top of maybe the buff zone from Rising Circlet. Uh, and grants all teammates a one new shield that nullifies damage less than 20% of the user's maximum HP. Cool. So we get status ailment, huge buffs, and a shield. <laughs> That's not it though. This does not stack with any other shield. The skill gauge for this skill can be filled by attacking enemies, but will also gradually fill automatically. Abilities that increase skill gauge fill rate will not affect this automatic increase. This is actually a pretty huge deal, um, just because of the fact that for multiple reasons, it's a bit of a double-edged sword. Uh, as I've stated before in multiple of my previous Dragalia Lost videos, in terms of new units, I haste abilities are one of the best abilities in the game, in my opinion. Um, just because of the fact they let you spam your moves way more often, and usually uh, the, one of the main reasons why you pick and use a unit in the first place is because of their move so not only does it let you do more damage but depending on on the unit itself it lets you like combo into different types of things um so the fact that exalted glory refills on its own but it's not affected by haste is a bit of a double-edged sword but i altogether i would i would think on paper that it should roughly net out okay like Kind of equal out because normally you would use haste in order to get your stuff more consistently like faster okay however because the fact that exalted glory kind of refills on its own it kind of already does that for you it's it's almost like it has its own version of haste without needing it. okay so the only reason why they would add on that small little disclaimer about abilities that increase basically that haste abilities were not affected increase 
Um, I think that's strictly for the fact to make sure that the move isn't too busted. Because if they made it so that Exalted Glory was able to be refilled automatically and was still affected by haste, you would be able to just spam this move like no tomorrow. Um, so I'm pretty sure that's just simply to help make the move a little bit balanced. So overall, I would say it serves its own purpose. Uh, you don't need haste on him in order to get the move more often, which is a good thing because of the fact that overall, um, I would say that on its own, it would pro you would probably get the move just as often on its own with automatic refill, uh, similar to how you would with another unit that might have haste. So I feel like they'll be roughly the same. That's why I'm saying like they kind of net out. They're about you in my opinion. Um, anyways, so Exalted Glory is an absolutely ridiculous move. <laughs> and just for the record, uh, Gala Prince is, an, is considered an attack unit and he just provides so many ridiculous buffs. Like he's almost like a support unit, but he's not. He's, he does good damage. It's it's insane. Um, in terms of the co-ability, they're introducing a new co-ability in the game called Dragon Shifting Boost. And Gala Prince is the first unit to uh, introduce this uh, co-ability. And what it does is that in while in dragon form, adds 10% to the damage modifier and extends shape shift by 20%. Okay, fairly decent, but it is worth keeping in mind that this affects the whole team, especially in co-op. Uh, so that's worth noting. Don't know how often this is actually going to be relevant, to be honest, but it's just worth noting. Um, I know that particular units like Worm or Merm, whatever her name is, scroll down, Mim, my bad. <laughs> units like Mim will definitely benefit from an ability like that in particular, just because the fact that Mim, a kind of a core aspect of Mim's hit is the fact that she kind of wants to be in dragon form as much as possible. So an ability, uh, co-ability like Gala Prince's for the shape-shifting booth definitely will help benefit that. Although there's not too many units that are like them uh, that want to be in dragon form as much as possible. So again, it's kind of like, it's one of those, at least as of right now, the ability is kind of eh. Um, it's probably not gonna see the most busted amount of use. Um, it's just one of those ones that's like, oh, okay, sure. I mean, I guess I'll use it. It's nothing crazy, though. Uh, in terms of the passive abilities, it's Dragon Lights Resolve 2. Reduces, reduces Dragon Gauge completion over time by 30% and increases attack rate when shape-shifted by 10%. That's actually pretty good. Pretty good, especially if you end up having like a really busted dragon uh, equipped him as well. That can be absolutely devastating. Just means you get to stay in dragon form for like a much longer period of time. Uh, has Sacred Shield 2, which has 100% resistance to curses and poison. This is a common feature that we tend to see among Gala units where they are resistant to 100% resistance to two ailments instead of just normally one, like most units. Uh, also has Draconic Charge 2. Kills 50% of the user's dragon gauge when their HP drops 30%, only happens once per quest. And that to me is kind of like, okay, that's nice. Um, it's not something crazy though. Uh, it will definitely help out in a pinch though. That will, I would say that for sure. Just because of the fact that it, it basically guarantees an instant dragon uh, transformation. And just at least in terms of tech, uh, sometimes amongst the harder difficulty difficulty quest you you will want to transform into your dragon form just to avoid getting hurt by a big damaging move or a big aoe move or something okay so uh that's actually a really low-key good ability just because of the fact it at least guarantees you one transformation assuming you live the attack that makes you drop down that low key. so altogether not too bad uh in terms of whether or not it's worth chasing, I kind of want to say yes. Um, just because of the fact that his activated abilities are absolutely nuts. He provides just so many different buffs. He gets, he, he creates a buff zone and increases strength by 20% on top of uh, his second ability, increases strength and defense by 
Both together, it's a 35% strength increase. Uh, on top of providing shields and inflicting paralysis, it's it just it's just absolutely nuts. And he has an AOE move. The guy is nuts. <laughs> He's absolutely crazy. Uh, <laughs> I in terms of my own personal setup, I I definitely will probably end up using Gala Prince alongside my Mim, uh, just because of the synergies that I kind of mentioned previously. So that's on that's a pretty cool aspect in my opinion. Uh, and of course the 100% resistance to poison and curses makes him uh, very viable against uh, Dark Quest 2, of course, just because those are the ones that they tend to inflict on you. But altogether, really good unit. I'm, I'm pretty happy with him, especially for a first anniversary uh, unit so far. He's, he's honestly... He, I don't know how to describe it, but I'm, I'm satisfied. <laughs> All right, but other than that, that was it for today, guys. I would love to hear what your guys' thoughts and opinions are about Gala Prince in the comment section down below. Uh, do you think he's meta? How are you going to use him in your setups? But other than that, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe, and hit that bell button. It's the best way I know when I upload more videos such as this one. My name is Brian from KX Nation. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace, guys.